Hello, welcome back to Mana. My name is Beast, and I am back with. This one isn't too hard, too. Hello. You've also got more people than you normally would have. So it's, so, so it's not just the voices in my head this time. Take your medicine. What medicine? Stay in school, kids. <laughs> Anyways! Uh... Would Cheezer do jaywalk? <clears throat> would Cheezer do jaywalk? No, no, not at all. I would jaywalk. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that is something I was gonna ask. Like, did y'all see the fucking probably the stupidest upload I've ever done? <laughs> probably, but you know what? Uh, Scott Rest His Soul did a few uh, uh, interesting l uh, tier lists of his own, so. I was actually going to do that tier list the night before. After taking my melatonin for the night, but alas, I couldn't get everything sorted out together before I really needed to go to bed since I had to wake up early the next day. <laughs> mm. So, shame, but uh, it is what it is. Well, had to get up early is a bit of a stretch. I didn't have to get up early, early. however, I knew I would be woken up early because my mother literally told me, uh, we're waking you up at like 12 uh, like fuck at, at lunchtime because we have spaghetti and i just sat there like well Ooh, I, I love spaghetti but and i just sat there like i mean if they wake me up at that time and i eat i'm not gonna f me fall back asleep so i actually have to go go to bed in order to get my eight hours of sleep uh, did i get my eight hours of sleep nah this is probably the most coordinated you've ever been in your life i mean <laughs> Funny fact, I, I, I said, uh, uh, many know that yesterday I had a shift, since I usually always mm. have a shift on Tuesday. Uh, mm -hmm. They actually called me at half an hour before the shop even opens, mm -hmm. because, because for some reason, the delivery was just that early. And you may be wondering, mm. okay, uh, you usually wake up to where you can work until the shop closes. So clearly this is like hours before that. And you'll be right. I usually set my alarm to 12 midday, essentially. To So when I, I can wake up, eat, and get to work comfortably and work my five hours. However, as, as I've already said, they woke me up at half past 7 a.m. However, that is wrongly worded because I was already awake. <laughs> I, for some reason, after five hours of sleep, woke up on my own like, maybe like 10 minutes before they called. <laughs> I don't know why I was still dead tired at work and proceeded to have to sweep outside in the fucking cold. That was unpleasant. Mm. But hey, of course they had to fetch the fucking massive thing for the cartons today, and they need to be and the I needed to sweep there while the thing was gone. Anyways, uh, in the time-honored tradition of America, bright red cars are called pony cars because of their reputation as playthings for schoolboys, and uh, I know where this is going. What the Enzo fuck? Ferrari. Enzo Ferrari would be proud. While yellow models are jackass cars, because only morons drive them. A certain German woman I know, whether aware of that or not, deliberately drives a particularly flashy yellow vehicle around. Apparently she very much enjoys the compliments she gets from colleagues at work, usually some iteration of it really suits you. In other words, a, a stupid car like that is just about a ride for a dumb blonde. But she hasn't caught on to the fact that she's being mocked and I've tactfully decided not to inform her either. Just like what with women who get flattered when someone tells them your dress does wonders for your figure, it's pretty tough to let her know after the fact she's not really being complimented. But sometimes, things like this can come back to bite you when you least expect it. Huh? Well, I can't say I did not know that JB was Germany. It was German. This cannot be good. 
I can elaborate on that um, as time goes on. <laughs> Is oh great heavens! Oh goodness gracious! Beauty spot does it one does the wonders, doesn't it? Also, violent fit as we try to get a thumbnail for future use. Oh, not just that. I'm, I actually like just spammed the F12 button. <laughs> Doesn't exactly work, sadly. Anyway. Also, another thing I should point out is that they call them pony. Uh, they refer to pony cars, and indeed, to avoid copyright monsters coming and beating them up. Uh, in the uh, censored version, the Steam version you see here, but in the original version, they just out and out say what uh, a lot of official makes actually are. I'm more of a Mustang guy myself. Maybe a good Dodge every now and then. Mm -hmm. If you ever found me having to pick a car, I would go for the original Audi Quattro. I don't know cars. So I, I know that shit. one. That's a rally car. That's a rally car. Anyway. Yes, indeed. I don't know. I don't have any bimbos among my acquaintances. Probably selling Girl Scout cookies. Either way, better not get too close. Let's get out of here. Well, I want some cookies. <laughs> okay, my mind again. Oh dear. Meant to prepare yourself. Okay. Howdy, she's talking like a cowgirl, and she sure can ride me if she wants to. Oh, you're, you're, that's valid. <laughs> that's valid. I knew that was gonna come. <laughs> I should have seen that a lot further than I had done. Bullwhip and brand me. Just give her the hat. Beast uh, thinks he's beat me, but he hasn't. Up, <laughs> oh, oh boy. My it's Steam not notification not. is blocking the fucking text box. Thank you. Very cool. <sighs> what is that? I'll explain later. Sorry, but go on ahead. <laughs> you got some money for me, boy. She's my guardian, or rather my guarantor. It's fine. Hurry and take Machina back. I'll be right behind you. I'm just gonna say a quick hello. Uh, Apparently not enjoying the way I'm shooing her off with my hands like a stray dog. Amin walks away with a sulky expression, shooting repeated glances over her shoulder. After watching Amin and Machina disappear past the school gate, I screw up in an irritated expression, scratch my head vigorously. And approach the blinding yellow bimbo mobile. That's wild. Look, woman. Yeah, yeah more or less enjoying pretending to be my guardian. What did you come here for? Although I'm grateful that you're acting as my grantor of my background, I don't need a guardian of my age, kind of get lost. I'm sure you felt that firsthand. That made me answer that. If you think you can shut me up from <clears throat> my childhood, uh, you've got another thing coming. I'll repeat the question. What is you coming for? If it's about work, I thought I had a break for the moment. I would take a at me. Very normal school. <laughs> yeah, very normal <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it's normal. There's no problem at present. If you forced me to come up with one, uh, you being here would be top of the list. I'd yeah. let her top my list. You two are going to be insufferable. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, me and Bud are two sides of the same coin. We both <laughs> like the same kind of women, but for completely different reasons. Yeah, the problem is, unlike you two, I actually know this individual. I also know her. I watched the anime. 
true. <laughs> kind of changed my mind very quickly. I'm just going to say this now. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen her be dragged shy. through the door as oh. it closes behind her. Yep. Uh. Don't, don't spoil it too much for Bud. I'm not saying anything more, don't worry. <laughs> I prefer to avoid lying out right where possible. Lies are like colors. The more you pile up, the blacker things get. Get enough of that place and things turn just as black. I don't need you to tell me that. I'm handling this myself, which is precisely why I don't need you giving me surprises like this. What, are you serious? You really did just come to see me? So ああ、ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。
Please don't spread it around. It's a pain in the ass to have to bend the spoon every time I introduce myself. <laughs> I do understand. Don't mind my jokes. I get that a lot. Hurry up and get going. You don't have the time to play around here either, do you? You're right. My bad, JB. Yeah. I'll watch as JB turns around and finds their car with blonde hair swinging behind her and waves. That is not what a Ferrari sounds like. As she drives off, I receive a call cell phone. I, 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 I retrieve my a cell phone from. Ah! As she drives off, I retrieve a cell phone from my school bag. Although I'd pretended otherwise, I've been carrying my work phone around just as ordered. With a black, low profile slide phone I received from JB specifically for company business. I slide the screen up quickly and put the unlock pin and call up the menu screen. Although it looks like a perfectly normal cell phone, any calls made from this machine pass through a special encrypted line. There's only one entry in the contract. The contacts. A single number is listed. That single number is listed under JB. Ju uh, Julia Bardera. Naturalized name uh, Harudera Yuria. My direct supervisor at my part-time job. You're gonna come at least give me an advance warning. I click my tongue in irritation, slide the phone shut, and stuff it in my po pocket of my uniform so I can respond instantly in to any future contact. How did that are you, Julia? Jalius? Jalius? What? Alias JB? Jalius? As the woman said Jalius herself, Caesar. she's something of a pain in the ass. <clears throat> He'll go nearly half a year without a single call, then suddenly, in a brusque standby in the designated point. Uh, then suddenly, it's a brusque standby in the designated point, where, of course, she has some incredibly troublesome job waiting to push on me. Nah, it's almost better when there's actually a job. Sometimes she leaves me at the rendezvous point for more than an hour without any contact. And then when I finally get the call I've been sitting around waiting for, it's a curt situation resolved, and I go right back home again. Well, I do get a travel fee deposited into my account just for heading to the standby point, so I suppose it's not a complete fool's errand in that sense, but uh, sometimes I can't help but feel like my time on this earth isn't being spent efficiently. It's something of a behind-the-scenes part-time job. Uh, the work would be troublesome to explain to others if they asked. Of course, it's also the kind of job I can just casually quit when I want. It's not the kind of job I can just casually quit when I want to. More importantly, there's a position that I inherited from my master. I wouldn't walk away even if I could. Well then, how should I explain this to and company? I don't think I'll be able to pass her off as a cookie peddler after all. I passed through Mihama Academy school, yay, dragging myself along with, on heavy feet. <laughs> as expected, the instant I show my face in the classroom, Amine jumps all over me. Most of my classmates are gathered on the far side of the room, apparently having watched me from the window. And as I enter, they're all looking at me with questions in their eyes. <laughs> Blondie? Naturally, Amine is the one who steps forward to interrogate me, as if declaring herself the representative of the class. That said, the rest of the group doesn't seem to be disinterested either. Makina's staring at me with a dazed expression, and Sachi's clutching her hands together in front of her chest, waiting for my words with bated breath. As for Michiru... For some reason, she's glaring at me like I kicked her puppy. Oh, Saki, Sakaki, on the <laughs> other hand, is uh, sitting primly in her seat, reading a book. As if to announce, she's, a, she's above such things. But judging from the way she hasn't turned the page once since I came in, I uh, probably got her attention as well. Told you already, did People I? don't read that fast. She's my superior from a part-time mm -hmm. job. Joshi! Joshi ka! Joshi ne! Yeah, I lost both my parents when I was a kid, so I have to earn my own living expenses. That's a little difficult to summarize, but well, I get rid of garbage or crawl into various spaces to take care of the cleaning. Uh, it's what you call dirty work. Uh, 
That's right, but she is on the management side, so she does get her hands dirty. Hey. JB. JB? Her real name is Harudera Yuria. JB is a pet name. I would let her keep me as a pet. Uh, she's a naturalized citizen. I think she's originally <coughs> German. I don't really remember. Pull out the chair from my seat and drop my bag on top of the desk with a deliberately loud thump. Questioning over now? If you're satisfied, if you've satisfied your curiosity, then go sit down. Class is about to start. She does not look happy. Just as I speak, the first bell rings, and Bakken and Sachi scurry back to their seats. But the large woman who's been interrogating me, her expression still smoldering with irritation. Oh, we lost Bud. He's dead! Pulls out the chair from the seat in front of mine and sits down heavily. Why did he send best of I like trains, kid? Oh dear, Tomska. That'll uh, be the I uh, like trains joke. Yeah. Fun fact, I am actually a railway enthusiast as well. Anyways, uh, you know what? This is a good fucking moment. I'm gonna pause the recording real quick and get myself a fucking snow spray. Maybe it'll show up by the by the time I'm back. So, uh, right. BRB. We back! Bud is back as Hello. well. I had to drop out right quick. <laughs> what? Spit it out then. I wish. That's your big question? What a joke. Don't stick your nose in my face. You got a mustache starting there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just screwing with you. Sounds fun, Please give it do. a try. I'm gonna punch it slow and lacking in serious intent. I dodge it easily with a slight, light swaying motion of my upper body. Think it's over calmly. Do I look like a man who could be in a relationship? I'm gonna stare into my eyes as if searching for the truth. I wish I knew her very, very intimately. Yeah, we're we're a big fan of older women, aren't we? We like older women. Hold on, that's yourself. Just... Keep away from the cougars. That hold on, that just reminds me of a picture someone sent me once. Hold on, where is it? Should have been that long ago. Ah, oh, there we he's go. He's gonna find the picture. He's finding it. He's finding it. I found it. He's found it. He's found it. There's nothing. I'm sending it currently. There he's together. <laughs> I'll also show it to <laughs> the people. Oh, oh, this, this old oh, chestnut. That's great. Browser. Okay. <laughs> ah yes, let's be in our mid thirties together. It's great. That's I just found this gif. What gif? This gif. <laughs> Hide your mom, the MILF hunter is coming, oh lord. Oh, Literally no. you. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah. I hate that that's the line that follows that. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm, I'm right. What is it? Wow. <clears throat> Tax evasion. finally came up. In paper, I was studying abroad in Canada or some similar lie they came up with from a forged personal history. But if they start pushing into that story, this will just drag on. Answering somewhat honestly now should make for less trouble down the line anyway. Before I came here, I guess I was a freeloader of sorts. Himo? You want to make it sound fancy or maybe a gigolo? I, I was being supported by an unrelated older woman. 
Hell yeah. Juggalo, consider it. Uh, uh, Juggalo would be more accurate considering how such of a clown he is. Yeah. No, she's a friend of the other woman. I started mooching off her after the first one died. <laughs> Sounds so bad, doesn't it? <laughs> we are awful. In exchange, she worked me brutally hard on the job. She doesn't have anything to complain about. I'm gonna shut her eyes, slaps her hands to her, on her forehead, and heaves a heavy sigh. He's desperate to get a space parked in. I'm just gonna say. Girlfriend, no. That's that's how much I'll say. <laughs> right. I'll admit I don't quite understand why that's the main point here, but I guess this stuff's on the mind of girls at this age. If you try to force your perspectives onto everything, you'll lose sight of the bigger picture. <laughs> Although she doesn't look entirely satisfied by my response, uh, I'm gonna mutter the brief while well, all right. Rises from the chair and heads back to her own seat. I watch until she, fi she finally sits down, then quickly turns to look behind me. No, what you? Be behind me, I find a bright red meat just staring back at me. Are well, you listening? No, but... That's a good no, one to add but... to the soundboard. No, but... No, but... Crossing her arms tightly in front of her chest, her face bright red, Michiru babbles frantically in response as I thrust out my right hand and an energetic thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> nice tsunde, <laughs> Michiru! <laughs> if you don't want to talk about some, you should make it all grotesque. Based on that theory, I tried spicing things up a little more than the reality, but uh, who knows how much of it they believed. Of course it's true that my parents died when I was still a kid, that I was picked up by an old woman, my master, and that I lived off the money she earned. After my master's death, I did get work from her friend JB in order to earn my keep. On top of that, it's thanks to her vouching for me that I'm able to attend a normal school like this in the first place. Huh. Now that I think about it, I didn't change the facts much at all. But then the more you focus on constructing believable lies, the less they tend to work. When you stick more or less to the truth, you'll end up convincing people no matter how absurd the story sounds. A promising start would be a bit of an overstatement, but I think I can work with this. No matter what sort of life you're living, you'll run into people who just won't listen to what you have to say. When words don't get through, the easiest alternative is beating them into submission. Certainly a bit of a rough solution, but when you're dealing with another man, it's at least an option. And when you're dealing with a woman, let alone a shrimp of a girl that doesn't come up to your shoulders, it's a different story, is it though? Depends Only on this is the have. age of gender equality. <laughs> Warning, equity incoming. <laughs> if you start swinging your fists around out of irritation under those circumstances, anyone would call it bullying the weak. It's bad style. It leaves an unpleasant taste in, my, in your mouth, too. And what's called for in such situations is perseverance and patience. They're always saying we live in an age of technological wonders. Stick so them in the torture rack. waiting for someone to invent a machine you can stick on your back and switch to Zen-like, immediately, uh, instantly granting yourself infinite self-control. But despite that clear market potential, the world isn't yet such a convenient place. Well, no big deal. I'm pretty used to endurance tests by now. They saw that stuff in the bottle. They call it alcohol. It's been five minutes since I spotted Iri Sumakina wandering aimlessly around the campus and called out what you're up to in a casual tone. On the bright side, she reacted to my voice and stopped dead in her tracks instead of fleeing. But the next step is proving a little more problematic. The girl's just staring at my face. She hasn't said a word. I think she's dead. Hold on, I got the perfect gift for this. Oh no.
To be honest with you, whenever I look at a Rusu Machina sprite, I just want to reach into the game and give her head pats. Agreed. She's daughter material. Kind of reminds me of my niece. So we've all heard of the saying, deer in the headlights, right? Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. So check out this deer. That is a deer above the headlights. Yeah, not flying. I'm amazed the uh, modern VW bug has only got a damaged bonnet, and that's it. Impressive. Anyways. Can you not speak Japanese? Oh. Sign is always mocking her shakes her head back and forth in denial, apparently having understood my question. Ah, uh, you're afraid of me, maybe? The silence continues, and this time there is neither confirmation or denial. It seems unlikely that she didn't understand the question, which would mean this one is in an uncertain territory, somewhere between yes and no, as far as I can guess. I'm repeating myself, but this sort of communication takes a lot of patience and persistence. I try to consciously consider things from Magna's point of view. A transit student with an unclear background. What's more, a man 178 centimeters high. Actually, no, I need to check. Women that. feel more comfortable around dogs, so the best choice is to run at her on, on all fours. <laughs> <laughs> of course, the bottom would say that. <laughs> you could say the problem was dog by technical trouble. Need to check something real quick. <laughs> or just approach them with a puppy. Who knows? Ugh. Or a sheep dog and go and herd them in. See this border collie running after them. Okay, I checked. Uh, uh, essentially, I checked the fucking. Uh, the Mila note for the gender bend project, and my character is 8 centimeters smaller. What, the Machina? No, then Yuji. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, my my, char my character, I think, is the tallest female character out. Right, uh, that one's not in that. That one's not. Yep, literally the tallest female character. Uh, tall women. With uh, the second tallest being one centimeter smaller. Oh, I see the fucking uh, Boreal Valley meme with the reporter. Yeah, <laughs> literally, that's that's how you gotta make her feel comfortable, okay? Oh uh, no! Now it. I have to look for pictures. Well, women love dogs. They love them. <laughs> Everyone loves dogs. It's even better if you do it at nighttime. <laughs> We all know the golfer of the Boreal Valley. <laughs> That's boring. Play it where it lies. Like a sneaker cue. Hold on, let me just open image address as well so I can put it in the browser again so people watching can also see. Let me just stop doing this. Now that I'm <laughs> trying to actually fucking show people what I've sent as well. <laughs> the, the gulf of the Boreal Valley. Anyways, moving on. From the perspective of Machina, who I'd guess be to be around 140 mm -hmm. centimeters, might as well be a little. It might well be a little intimidating to have me towering above her. At the moment I crouch down to the eyes are level with hers. Seems like you're wandering around the grounds. Are you looking for something? 
Machina speaks a single voice in a quiet, a single word in a quiet voice. Once again, shakes her head in denial. And then, what were you doing? That's point of some interest to me, but well, you get down to it, whatever she is and wherever she is and what she's doing is her own business, I suppose. I'm not a policeman, and I don't have any reason to drag it out of her. In this case, it might be best to find some words to wrap this up cleanly, give her a friendly goodbye, and let this timid creature be on our way. As she reached this conclusion, Makita slowly moves her hand to the rear of her skirt, and grabs something with her stubby fingers and pushes it in front of my eyes. Hmm, what's this thing? At a glance, the item in Makita's small hand is a toy-like object, roughly the size of an egg, with an LCD screen buried in the, into the center. The old-fashioned Tamagotchi. Not the Tamagotchi. <laughs> What's that? A close uh, inspe uh, examination. That's some unknown life form or monster most closely resembling a chick displayed in blocky pixels on the central LCD. Seems to be programmed with some cheap animations about three patterns or so. Ah, uh, another thing could I remember reading a news article about this a few years ago. Developing the smallest three axis geomagnetism sensor in the world at the time. A certain company fed that technology into a children's electronic toy, which then became an explosive hit among grade schoolers. It's a pedometer, right? Uh, well, those, a what? Uh, a pedometer. Oh, how? Oh. Okay. If it was what you uh, thought it One was. One of those things where the was, pet bud. grows up faster the more you walk. Yeah. If, if you thought it was the different spelling, uh, but it would have been problematic, but as it stands, perfectly fine. Like a fucking flashbang, I read that as a whole. It would need a different spelling. I, I have the advantage where I can at least not immediately go to that, since first off, I know what a pedometer is. Second off, uh, sadly, I know French, and uh, the French word for feet is pied, if I remember correctly. Why do you know French? That's because I had French classes in school. I fucking hated as well. So did I. I my, my aunt <clears> was <throat> head of languages, no less. I used to be actually good in French until I had one certain teacher that made me hate French. Like, es were essentially they, were they what French happened themselves? was... No, no. I <laughs> actually had a French teacher, like an actual French teacher, and she was quite funny. She even, like, talked about, like... French people don't know, uh, don't uh, like f the French language doesn't really have like double L's or something like that when it comes to mm -hmm. language. Like fell, or like fell yeah. or pull or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. e even like when it's a double letter, they would s essentially pronounce it as one. So mm -hmm. uh, there's one word in German called pollen, which is pollen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this French teacher was coming to Germany and she had uh, hay fever and so she was complaining about all the fucking pollen and so she said, wanted to say uh, she wanted to say pollen but instead said pollen pollen is German for Polish aka the Polish so instead of saying god fucking damn it all these pollen she said god fucking damn it all these Polish people all these Polish people we must retake Prussia. <laughs> what was it? 1939 again? The Prussia has nothing to do with Poland, though. They have East Prussia. That's uh, Kaliningrad or Blasters controlled by Russia, presently. Okay. Yeah. yeah, they but all, yeah, they uh, all uh, hold But yeah, like, that, for me, that teacher was actually a fun and genuinely good teacher, good and nice teacher. However, at one year, I suddenly had a teacher that was... Let's just say like this. That year in school was supposed to be a mainly, like spoken French kind of classes where we were supposed to focus on speaking the language rather than writing and learning grammar and shit like that. However, the teacher was essentially every fucking lesson would just be like, okay, here's a fucking uh, exercise in a book, do it right now. And he's also <clears> the type <throat> where you, you have a, in a language class, an exercise that's like, okay, here's this text where it has... Uh, a set where it has like these blank spaces in the text. Uh, check, figure out which verb belongs in which blank space and then put it into the right uh, form, essentially. And all of the tech, all of the empty spaces had numbers. 
So mm -hmm. why would they give you numbers? So of course they gave you numbers so you could just write down the numbers and then write down the correct form of the verb. Well, okay. my teacher saw me doing that and proceeded to cuss me the fuck out because like, you're not special. You're doing it like everyone else. Write the entire text. My face went. Like, why the fuck would they put numbers in the fucking free spaces if they wanted you to write the entire text down? Are you fucking retarded, you piece of shit? Like, just to put it into perspective, uh, he was the kind of teacher that even the teacher's pets hated. Beast rants, my beloved. Like, even the, <laughs> even the students that hated... That, that even the students that liked almost every fucking teacher hated him. Anyways. In other words, she wasn't looking for anything particular. The wandering itself was the objective. Walking's a good thing, since it's a aerobic exercise without too much sprain on joints. If you're gonna walk anyway, having some sort of... Random photo, go. ...result from the effort might make it feel more worthwhile. <laughs> Marking her points at the school gate as she speaks. I see. Makes sense that she'd want to avoid crowded places given her extreme shyness. That would restrict her strolls to pacing around the school grounds, which would quickly get repetitive. So the digital pet serves as a distraction from that boredom, most likely. Do you like taking walks? Mm. Sort of, is it? Well, walking for fun at this age might be a little odd. So it's more like a hobby of an old man. Do you have any other interests? Like reading, for example. Do you need any books lately? Hmm. Manga's fine too, whatever. To all the truth, I'd already heard from Amine that manga, that, that Makina often reads books. And reading is a hobby of mine as well. I think it's a decent common topic for starters. In response to my question, Makina holds her right index finger to her chin and mumbles, hmm, while gazing up at the sky. <sighs> Quiz, huh? Was it interesting? W crossword puzzle enjoy. What the fuck? Riddle me this. Mm. Riddle me this, Batman. Life threatening to observe the naked eye. What kind of death ray weapon is that? And the sweet of all things? Mm. Some new tech from the West? Just looking at it is dangerous. I mean, it's probably some variety of optical weapon. Some like an X-ray possessing mass. Some sort of thief saver style light-based killing tool. The sun? No way. It's just it just seeing it is dangerous. Epilepsy warning. Some sort of super weapon that radiates a pulse to the receptors of the eyeball, using a flickering pattern to stimulate the brain cells and trigger accelerated apoptosis. What is blood waffling about? Hold on, hold on. This thing is a sweep, right? Sweet. Where the hell do we go from there? All I'm getting is some sort of chocolate pastry shooting out a mysterious light beam. Pew pew pew. Don't know. I give up. What's the answer? Mitarashi dango. W. What? Mitarashi dango. Mitarashi no yo. See and die. See and die. Ah, uh, I get it. I missed that angle. Candy. <laughs> I didn't get it because I'm not <laughs> Japanese. Hmm? Uh, yeah, sorry. I told you up. Without even a buy or a later, Makina leaves the area at a trot as if fleeing from me. Doesn't seem like she outright hates me, though. <laughs> How long have you been there? <laughs> What do you mean by the opposite? あ、まあ、なんつうか、単純に人見知りってのもあるけど、マキナはユージ君に嫌われないようにしてるんだと思うよ。Trying uh, not to be disliked. マキナって本当はもっと明るい子なんだけど、明るすぎてうざがられることも多いから警戒してるのよ。True enough, I remember seeing her rushing around, brandishing a cicada, and cackling that first time. That's her normal state, then the way she behaves in front of me would certainly be a product of deliberate self-restraint, but... Awesome. I think it could be interpreted as simple fear as well. 
まあ怯え半分ってのはあると思うけど大丈夫じゃないかな What makes you say that? さっきマキナと会話するときユージ君マキナの目線に合わせて腰を低くしたでしょあれって実は有効手段なんだよねふん<笑> Yeah When I was a kid, there was a time I'd been surrounded by unfamiliar adults and found myself on the brink of tears. It's probably a bit more that found him at the brink of tears. <laughs> When one of the adults stooped down to talk to,、uh, with me face to face, I immediately got emotionally attached. Looking back, I feel like shouting, You sure got attached to an outrageous person, or complaining about what an idiot I was, but. <laughs> It's like trying to imprint on a puppy. Yeah. Now she's glued to you, or something like that. Uh, uh, <laughs> あんまり変な意味にとってほしくないんだけどずっと一緒にいると疲れるのよね。Damn, bitch. Small children do that. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is the reason why my brother and sister in law look so relieved whenever I come round. My mother works at a school, not as a teacher, but essentially as a. Like, essentially, there's a service at the school where. Parents that would be still at work at the time their kids come get out of school, and because it's elementary school, they could just stay at the service essentially a daycare small daycare, type、yeah. thing where they can just stay for a couple of hours until the parents come home. And my mother works、mm-hmm. there, and apparently, her boss caught wind that I still didn't have a job and was like, Hey, maybe he wants to work here as well. And my mother was immediately, Nah, he does not. <laughs> I can relate to that. You'd have no I difficulty would have. sleeping.、Mm, it's、I、more so、have. that I would constantly, while at work, have to, you know, hold back the urge to grab the kids by the head and smash them to the ground for every stupid thing they do. Violence against children is only illegal if you get caught. True. Pretty sure you get spotted very quickly after that. Just tell them not to tattle. Maybe she's playing by herself because she understands that? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I can't、Uh-oh. see the、Final、text box again. Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy! In before somebody makes fan art of a Mane playing Final Fantasy. <laughs> uh. Be fairly mundane, to be honest. Final Fantasy. <laughs> 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 I don't plan to force you to be friends if you don't want to be, but yeah, I'll try to avoid being hated. If I avoid unnecessary contact, I shouldn't inspire any hatred or come to hate anyone myself. In exchange, I won't be liked or come to like anyone either. Maintaining emotional distance along、uh, pro- appropriate lines is an essential but extremely difficult aspect of forming efficient interpersonal relationships. Of course, there are always those careless puppy dog types who will leap into your arms, wagging their tails right from the start. <laughs> Well, just thinking about how beautiful you are. How slick. Alright, l I'm gonna close your eyes. Her chest is swelling with some ridiculous expectation. I'm gonna close her eyes and thrust out her lips as instructed. Moving quickly and silently and make, my go- make good my getaway, leaving the girl to her foolishness. And they say chivalry is dead. 
<laughs> I uh, see discretion it. the part of valor. Machina may have the right idea. Leaving out later and goodbye entirely and silently running away certainly is less troublesome. Don't take it the wrong way, Amine. It's not that I hate you. I'm just trying to avoid being hated by you. Doing a very bad job at that. Hmm. Read books in a well-lit area. That is an order. That was a teach I enjoy reading that. them in... I enjoy reading them in the pitch dark using my <laughs> echolocation. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy reading by braille. Oh wait, hang on. People need to do that. I, I, I assume Bud is no longer. I, I assume Bud is no longer part of the generation that uh, knew the pain of trying to play with your Game Boy in the middle of the night on a on a car drive. No, no, I was part of that generation. Oh, you were still part of that generation. Well, yeah. fun fact, I, I, was that that I, I was part of that generation. I I was part of the generation. However, we I we had like this little light adapter thing you could plug in at the top. If you don't believe me, I can confirm that I do, in fact, have back pain. <laughs> yeah. I remember blowing on the cartridges. Yeah. Yep. Had to do like it. Everyone else did. And it's a tale the fact as that old as time. Inter watching the cartridge's uh, internal battery die and they lose saves. <laughs> oh, God. That was my... That horrible. was my... Fucking second ever experience with Pokemon. Fucking playing. Server. Oh, I used to love playing the old Pokemons. Yeah. I wish there was a way. I wish there was a way. Like, I could like my first two Pokemon. experiences with Pokemon were Pokemon mm. Yellow and Pokemon Silver. Where Pokemon Yellow, I could never get past Brock because I refused to use anything but my Pikachu. While, <laughs> while on Pokemon Hell. Silver, I bought a fucking cartridge at a yard sale that already had a dead internal battery so I couldn't save. <laughs> also, also, uh, why is Sephiroth bawling? Objection. Sephiroth ain't bawling. <clears throat> Anyways. I hope Alpha's not uh, looking. At that time, I was accustomed to reading while well, shut up in a closet or dark room so those words felt a bit refreshing. Of course, it's not like I'm worried or obeying, about obeying the teachings of a woman who's already dead. And I'm still not good with direct sunlight. But here I am, searching for a bright place with a book in hand anyway. Aren't I adorable? Aren't I so kawaii desu? I'm going to shoot myself for that one. Ah! Listen, oh, you, no. you guys may be in pain for have, <clears throat> hearing me say that, but just imagine the excruciating suffering I went through saying it. Eagle's completely shot. They're sending a, <laughs> uh, they're sending a uh, hit squad out as we speak. <laughs> the first Pokemon games come out in 1996, man. I'm literally a fossil. No. Yeah. My first game was also yellow. Oh, I remember button mashing A, man. Everybody's done Skip that. all the dialogue. Skip all the dialogue. <laughs> yep. Oh, I want to play those old games again so much, man. They were so good. Who could ever forget the uh, cheat cartridges that they officially sold before they became illegal? Yeah. Those horseshoe-shaped <laughs> ones. They, they were amazing. My brother got one of those. <sighs> oh. I remember the first ever Pokemon game I actually, like, finished was uh, Pokemon Pearl. So, my first ever champion was fucking Cynthia. No. Oh, boy. My second ever champion was also Cynthia in Platinum this time. <laughs> Just running out of ideas. Mm -hmm. I can't even remember the original Elite Four now. The original League 4, I think... I, th I know there's Agatha, there's Lorelei, there's Bruno, there's Lance, and the champion Lance is Gary. Japanese. As uh, And the Gen 2 was the same one, except uh, Lance is replaced by Koga, and Gary is replaced by Lance. Yeah. I remember the last. I remember Gary. Yep. <laughs> oh. 
And then, of course, you get the rival. You get to name yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. So many good memories, man. Yeah. Playing it before I'd go off to God, school. God, I wish I like wish there was a way to play the fucking underground in the original per Diamond and Pearl online. I think still. you can just get the ROMs, and the ROMs are like 100% accurate, but the, I don't know how to get it. The Desmium doesn't have Wi-Fi. Like, uh, th at least that's the only DS emulator that I personally know. I don't know a DS emulator that lets you play Wi-Fi. If I if I knew one, I would 100% try and play Underground again. Because Underground is so fucking good, man. The underground I had the Pikachu the and the Blastoise. Oh, man. I think I still have the Blastoise around here somewhere. But I don't have a working Game Boy anymore. I have to do some funny things to my advance to try to get it working again as well. And they're so expensive to get new ones. I also, I, I kind of oh. wanna, I kind of wanna oh, replay. Now, kind of wanna replay the first yeah, two uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games. Oh, hang on. How many of you remember uh, the original Game Boy uh, Pokemon uh, trading card game, and indeed Pinball? I remember the trading card game. That was like fun. why? No, why is the why is the his... why is the fucking like dual theme so fucking good? I ended up getting a strategy card for that. Not me. I actually never actually beat it. Yeah, I, Game my brother Boys always so old, man. Me. Yeah, man. 1989. It was released in Japan. Like I don't remember why. I don't know why the fucking themes for the original Pokemon trading card game on the Game Boy were, were, were such bangers, actually. Hold on, fucking YouTube, where is it? Uh, Pokemon. We've gone off on another tangent, folks, but to be honest with you, if it's on good games, you don't mind, right? Game nah, no, game I don't Boy. think you do. Oh, oh, my speaking God. of uh, Pokemon yes. trading card game, uh, not the, uh, not the uh, computer game, but the actual trading cards, I am looking right now at the Southern Islands collector set right about now. It's not exactly in 100% mint condition, but still. That's my emergency retirement fund. I need to make this quieter. Continue screen, what was that one again? Alright, that one, that. Awesome. We never had blue, but we had, uh, my brother had silver and, um, platinum and I had yellow. So good. Like, why was so was much fire. music from this game so good? Even if it was really basic. You yeah. can do a lot with a lot of basic things. That's the thing. Like, someone ought to remix these. Where's the glass? And there were so many different versions. You had yellow, you had soul silver. I think you had leaf green and fire red, um, crystal and sapphire, um, which led to a million and one jokes about the uh, Dulux, uh, the Dulux range of Pokemon games. Uh, Pokemon there was gold, lilac. Wasn't it the Blue. club leader duel, duel theme that slapped so fucking hard? And then there was the console ones as well. Yeah, like, there's a lot of Pokemon games. Yeah, my, my uh, cousin had the uh, Colosseum. My brother then, after he got the Game Boy, uh, not Game Boy, GameCube, successfully got um, uh, Colosseum, and then the very, very well-selling and very popular XD, because you could get Lugia in it. Yeah. Yeah, like, my my top Pokemon experience as a kid, when it comes to spin-offs, were still Mystery Dungeon and Ranger. Oh yeah, hang on. Ranger was no, not Ranger. Um, how many of you remember Pokemon Snap? I thought that was ingenious. I have a oh fucking God. CD with the entire Pokemon Snap soundtrack, even though I never played the game. <laughs> oh, what a shame! And I thought it was a lovely concept taking photos. Yeah, of yeah, it was. It is really thing. fun concept. Yeah. Like I, I wish mean, I could have played it cool as a as kid. Well. I, I still at some point want to play like the new Snap they made, but it, I feel like it. While it's good, it didn't quite capture the same charm, in my opinion. I don't know what it is. 
Yeah, so, sorry, audience, forgive these geriatrics uh, going back to old times. Mm. I'm not even... The thing is, I'm not even, like, old, old. But I'm yeah. also not old, old, man! But, you know, the family I lived in, we had a lot of hand-me-downs and a lot of old games. Mm. And so, yeah. when it comes to, like, childhood memories, I can relate so much to, like, yeah. people ten years older than me. Same here. Yeah. Same here. But yeah, can we just talk about, like, what the fuck were the writers for the first two Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games ru taking? Cocaine, man. They walked yeah. into the board. They walked into the boardroom, <laughs> hit a line, and then I threw it out there. <laughs> and then turned around to Satoshi Jujiri and said, "Yeah, let's do this." Oh, hang on, it's Tajiri Sato Satoshi in the Japanese style. I forgot, but still, just in Game Freak, there they are, just going, so "Hey, let's like, do, let's do some." Hit up a line, looked at him, ideas. let's do this, then made fire. <laughs> Anyways, uh, no reason to wander around looking for a sunny place in this shitty heat. Stepping away from the air-conditioned school building, I unfold the paper, uh, the school's admission guide pamphlet. On a coated three-fold brochure, there's a bird's-eye view is illustrated of the campus with a mark of the south of the schoolhouse, a noted planned site of library construction. Planned site. It means there's a library yet, I guess. Although there is something library esque on the second floor of the school building, the collaborative, the, the, collection, the collection only holds around 200 books. You can apply to have a book stocked if you're after one in particular, and apparently Book Mobile replaces the existing collection every once in a while. But it doesn't seem like it's being used that heavily. In other words, there's no reason to go out of my way to borrow the key to use it. I brought my own books, and there are plenty of well lit areas beside the library. Casually looking over the pamphlet, I find the words Rose Garden. This is definitely our principal doing. Oh no. My brain. Am I gonna say it first or are you? Talking about pinning something to some, I would like to pin you down in a bed. <laughs> he went first. <laughs> now your turn. It's my turn. I would like it if she pinned me down. Again, same coin, different sides. My turn. Unlike many roses, oh. full of thorns, choose a Says the idea. <laughs> I mean, th I mean, I mean, the thorns on the rose is literally just what I la mentioned last part. The fucking scratches on the back. <laughs> Sticky. You are. There we go. That one was simple. That one was fucking easy. Like, is <laughs> Oh, so I can easily imagine a certain woman who doesn't know how to act her age, deluding herself. Pretty flowers might calm your mind, but they won't fill your belly. Not tried hard Th enough. There are rose dishes out there. Roast rose. <laughs> well, not that, but you know. Uh, Don't go near David Austin, folks. <laughs> if you got room to grow them, uh, it'd be better to you. It would be better used for an edible plant. I'm telling you that would probably just make things unpleasant. You just have to remember the great principal Tachibana with a good day when I summer the next time I see her. Oh no. Rose Garden, eh? I don't have any interest in inedible <laughs> flowers, but I guess there would be a shade of tree or two as well. Imagining myself reading under a tree surrounded by blooming roses and brings a smirk to my face. Guided by these silly thoughts, I decide to head toward the Rose Garden for the first and only time. It's called a Rose Garden, but not a single one is in bloom. Based on map, this is definitely the right spot, and there's even a white arch that seems appropriate, but from what I can see, there aren't any roses in flower. Maybe the garden's still a work in progress, or perhaps they're cutting the buds during the summer. Well, they're cutting me. Well, not that I came to see roses in the first place, so whatever. <laughs> Use a cat for a pillow, you dum dum. 
It was a big old cat. That's that a fat surprised. cat. I was expecting anyone else to be here. Now, nah, more importantly, uh, what the heck's she doing? I approached silently and touched Makino's neck in the area of her carotid artery. He's got a pulse. In close inspection, he's breathing quietly. So I guess the wicked stepmother, Haman in this case, uh, didn't feed her a poisoned apple. She's sleeping? Like this thing. Cat, I think? A large cat is serving as the sadly sleeping Makino's pillow. I had taken it for a stuffed animal at first glance. It really looks like a fluffy toy, but when I draw close, the stubby ears buried in its fur twitch like miniature radar and antennas. My first question, and my next question, why sleep out here, soon resolves itself. You see, it's definitely nice and cool here. Cats are knowledgeable about cool places, or so they used to say. As for Mokin, I expect she was wandering around by herself as per usual, then grew exhausted and collapsed onto a, into sudden sleep on the spot. I watched a partially gnawed apple on Machina's chest rise and fall with her breathing. She fell asleep in the middle of eating, just like a baby. She noticed that Machina's mouth is far open and dripping transparent drool. Not to mention her hair is a scruffy mess, the ribbon on her uniform is crooked, and she's wearing different socks on her left and right leg. What's with this girl? As I look down upon her, Machina suddenly snuffles noisily. <coughs> What a weirdo. It's been a while she still since doesn't snore as loud as I do. Yeah. It's been a while since the last time I laughed at a woman's sleeping face. Even as I'm filled with the desire to keep watching, discomfort at the peaceful atmosphere of this place also was up within me. At that moment, I sensed someone watching me and look over to find that Makita's pillow cat had woken and staring up at me in surprise. <coughs> Sorry to bother you. Go back to sleep. I'll leave them, taking care to avoid making noise, and sit down under a tree a little ways away. <sighs> Wander around, wandering around as she pleases, and falling asleep in the nearest cool place when she gets tired. See, she certainly does remind you of a cat. I'm envious. It's not sarcasm or anything. I'm genuinely envious of Makino. I'm sure that she brings that little pocket of naturally peaceful space with her wherever she goes. I think that's something worth envying, and it's probably very precious to her as well. Well, be why she doesn't want to step outside the sanctuary of her school when she, when she can avoid it. Outside the sanctuary that would that would crumble in a moment without the protection of others. Wonder if the day will come when I too can sleep in that utterly defenseless way. Hmm. Turning towards the sound, I noticed a fat white cat from before appearing from the direction of the thicket I just left, rustling its way through the foliage on stubby legs. It stops suddenly when it spots me sitting under the shade of my tree. Glaring at me while sleeping with sleepy looking eyes, it lets out a single disgruntled meow. <coughs> My bad. After getting suddenly woken in the middle of a pleasant nap, it's only natural. If I were to pull out of bed on Sunday mor if, if I were pulled out of bed on a Sunday morning by some pushy religious solicitor, I'm sure I'd make a similar face. Last time that happened to me, I chased him in the night. Hmm. Although the fat cat doesn't seem to have accepted my apology, she's... He snuffles roughly and lumbers away from this place. As I'm watching the cat's dignified exit, the bushes start to rustle again. I hear the creature. Uh, I heard the sound of a dim-witted creature awakening, lazily stretch out its body. I, I don't know if that works, but who cares. I want to take a look, Mark, and crouched on the ground where all four is bending her back. Well, here's a cat in human form. Machina opens her mouth, holds down a yawn, and rubs roughly at the tears spilling out, spilling out of the corner of her eyes. After a restless look around the area, she draws herself up off the ground. It's not like I'm doing anything I need to be ashamed of, but uh, before I realize it, I've hidden myself from her. Mm. After standing stuck still for a moment, Machina takes a bite out of the apple in her hand and wanders off briskly. Where's she off to now? Doesn't look like he's got any particularly uh, particular destination in mind. Driven by an interest I find difficult to pin down, I decide to quietly follow Makina. There's no regularity to Makina's actions. Just when I think she's walking straight towards something, she'll come to a sudden stop, look around restlessly, and head off in a different direction. Doesn't seem like she's lost or anything, so I suppose she's just moving wherever her whims take her. Unfortunately, that randomness makes it pretty tough to tailor. It wouldn't be a surprise, serious problem if she noticed me, but uh, if I just call. But if I just call out to her now, I feel have the feeling she'll scamper off again. 
skillfully hide my presence and continue shadowing her movements. Obtaining a girl without her knowledge, objectively speaking, I guess this would be stalking. Just as I'm finally starting to get fed up with following Machina's direction was rambling, which resembles the random staggering of a sleepwalker more than anything else, the rare wandering monster in question comes to a sudden halt. Wandering monster. The resting place is an area on the outskirts of the school courtyard, in front of an artificial cement pond with uncertain purpose. Machina totters her way up to the pond, puts her hand in the pocket of her skirt and retrieves some half-eaten bre white bread starts tearing off chunks to throw into the water. Every time Makina's small hand hurls a bit of bread into the pond, a loud splashing sound resonates from the surface of the water. Apparently someone stuck it with fish and she's feeding them. <laughs> Is she fattening them up to eat? Clawfish? Makina looks around the area rapidly and grabs a short tree branch lying nearby, then leans over the depths of the pond and begins poking into the water. Although I was puzzled there for a moment, it seems like she's trying to capture a crawfish she spotted in the pond. <laughs> this looks risky. Given her character, it's obvious she'll be taking a first face first dive into the pond very soon if I sit, just sit there. Approach Makin from behind and call out to her. Hey, watch out or you'll fall in that pond. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't have called out to her out of nowhere. Makin's hand slips out of the ground in a stereotypical slapstick pratfall. Whoops. I swiftly reach out to the floundering Makin, firmly seize the collar of her school uniform and pull her back to safety. <laughs> Dangled by the nape of her neck like a kitten, Makin lets out a feline cry. I don't know why, but I just imagined him holding her up to uh, to his eye level by the scruff of her neck, like by her, <laughs> by, by her collar, just like she's just hanging there like a fucking cat. Yeah. You're light. Are you even 40 kilos? There isn't any difference in weight from the backpack I'm always carrying. Given this weight and size, I could lug her around a good uh, 25 kilometers in a single day. You give me a mental image of her be being Yoda. <laughs> we carried on Jedi training, it's great. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I wasn't planning to call out to you, but it's better than letting you fall into the pond, isn't it? No need to thank me, I did the natural thing, given the circumstances. Look at me, shamelessly doing the life-saving hero number, despite being a large part responsible for the trouble problem in the first place. I might have the makings of an American politician. <laughs> we don't, we don't speak of those times. <laughs> <laughs> Makita gives a quick bow of thanks, and without another word, starts to run away from me yet again. Hey, hold it! Where do you think you're going? Huh? Don't give me. Uh, why are you running away from me? When she asks me point blank, it's not like I have any particular justification for detaining her here. That said, it's kind of unpleasant to be avoided this blatantly. At the very least, if there's a reason she's doing this, I want to know about it. I think I asked this before, but are you scared of me? If there's some reason why you're avoiding me, how about telling me? If possible, I'd like to... I'll try to address it. Again, with a silent treatment. Decided to pursue the conversation more persistently, I squat down to match my line of sight with mocking us. Do you remember the name? Kazami Yuji. That's right, Yuji's fine. Okay, then call me what you want. I have to say, being called a big brother is a bit embarrassing on my end, but uh, well, alright. When I turn around in response to the splashing sound coming from the pond behind me, there are a number of fish gathered at the surface of the water, flapping their mouths into the band for more food. Seems they've come to expect the handout when people stand near the pond. Makina, you still have breadcrumbs left? Makina thrusts her hand into her skirt pocket and rummages through its contents. As she talks, she pulls things out of her pockets one after the other. 
The items that emerge are mostly sweets like candy, chocolate, and chewing gum, along with an erratic selection of tools like nail clippers, r clippers rubber bands, and glue sticks. Although I've heard that women's purses are connected to the fourth dimension, this girl's pockets seem to be connected to a garbage dump. <laughs> Makina, oh, carelessly, Ma Makina carelessly rains down the rubbish that emerges on the ground around her. One after the other. What's this? I pick up a plastic container shaped like a fil large film canister. Uh, canister. There's a label paste on the side filled with numbers and symbols of uncertain meaning. <laughs> I'm not gonna steal it or anything. Here, take it. And I hold out the case there. I'm not gonna snatch it back instantly. I'm not gonna sneak bites of other people's food and death at my age. Hmm. Who is this, I wonder? Curious, uh, Amane, huh? I didn't. Just saying the first name that popped into my head. Really, it wasn't. Guess she's got a surprisingly gluttonous side. Good as a word, Makina shoves some half eaten bread under my face. No, I wasn't planning to eat it. Take the bread scraps from Makina, tear off some small pieces, and throw them into the pond. Fish at the surface struggle like a pack of piranhas for the food, messily gulping it all down. Nice appetite, huh? I thought these things were carp, but uh, I had to get a closer look. They're actually goldfish? It makes sense. Mm -hmm. I see the fang. It is not actual koi. Let me zoom in. She does have one, I'm zooming in. Enhance. Enhance, I was about to say. <laughs> from a goldfish snatching game, huh? So these were originally goldfish from a scooping game. They're uh, well, certainly the tiny kind that sold as live food for carnivorous fish and pet shops, but uh, these things are huge. Fish generally can keep growing as long as they're alive, so the more you feed them, the bigger they'll get. What exactly have you been giving them, though? Bread. Bread. I don't know why this Love is some bread. Get, get him some baguette. <laughs> Ready, bready, go. Ah, I get it. You know, fish don't really know when they're full. They don't feel pain the way we do either, so they'll eat as much as you give them, even if their stomachs are bulging out. So the number one cause of death among aquarium fish is indig indigestion from being overfed. That's what it said when I, in something I read when I was a kid, at least. Uh, I think it was a magazine called Monthly Junior Science. They mentioned it in some article about raising fish in ozone ozonated water. It had articles on all sorts of things, not just fish, animals, space, whatever. My older sister was a seriously dedicated reader. I'd pick up magazines like that when she was finished, although half of it went out of my head. As I'm recalling the contents of sign magazines I read back then, I suddenly remember something. Hey, Maki. You had some pickled squid in that pocket, didn't you? No, just take it out for now. Uh, also, let's have have anything you could use as a string. You'll see. See, even the squid from Makina, I firmly tie one end at the, of the thread around it. 
and not the other end to a tree branch I picked up at random. Exactly. Now we. So now we. I toss a squid dangling by the thread into the pond. It ain't a good morning, because if it was a good morning, I'd be fishing. Around the area where I threw the squid, I could see the shape of the crawfish mocking at been poking out it, poking at it earlier. When I jingle the squid in front of his face, within a matter of seconds, the crawfish extends its pincers and firmly seizes the bait. There, hooked him. See that? And it's crawfish, Girl. not a clawfish. You've got the wrong word. As the dang of the captured crustacean in front of her eyes, Makina stares at it with an expression of immense curiosity. <laughs> there must be a lot of edible aquatic plants or something in there. Crawfish turn red when they have abundant food. They turn blue. No, not the blue lobster. Hold on. The blue lobster. <laughs> Fucking skull. The skeleton <laughs> appears. Blue lobster jump scare. Blue lobster. Yeah, hold on. If you take a small newborn crawfish and continuously give it food like potatoes, radishes, or sardines that don't contain carotene, it will turn blue in a month or so. I read it in a book when I was a kid and ended up trying it out myself. There were some that ended up with a lot of violet spots or white flecks, but I remember getting a few that turned deep blue as well. Okay, then try to catch one yourself. Pull the captured crawfish off the squid and return the turn it to the pond, then had hand the fishing pole to Makina. Experiencing new things is always worthwhile, so you might as well start by trying to catch one yourself. Don't fall into the pond, alright. Also, try to get the smallest one you can. Take the crude pole from me, Makina forcefully hurls the squid into the pond. Uh-oh. Already told you it's crawfish, not clawfish. What a mood. That She's just like me for real. <laughs> You're just like me for real, for real. I mean, I do remember pronouncing snail as snail back when I was in elementary school for a while, but uh, after my sister pointed it out to me, I stopped making that mistake. Would you have someone pl to point out that sort of mistake for you? Your mom, for instance? She just like me for real? I see. Well, oh. there's no mother in the world who hates her child was my mother's line, but uh, by now I'm all too well aware that the world isn't that simple. I suppose there really are mothers who hate their children. And for those children, they can't be a topic they want to chat about with some stranger. An awkward attempt at the consolation would backfire here. Hmm, me? Seems like I haven't quite gotten so the hang of being the called sister, right? Mm hmm. <laughs> you serious? How am I nice? <laughs> I just wasn't interested enough to risk it. She stared steadily at Makina's small back silhouetted against the pond. If you want to talk, I'll listen. She's just like me. Don't they say the kids are cuter when they're a little dumb? <laughs> well, but if she's courageous enough to admit some of it, don't put yourself down like that, kid. Has ever heard of anyone with that fierce reputation of being stupid before? Well, don't worry about it. There's nothing but idiots in the vi my vicinity, including me. <laughs> 
お兄ちゃんのことが嫌いで避けてたわけじゃないのよ逆に嫌われたくなくてバカな子だなってそう思われないようになるべく近寄らないようにしてたのよさ As like I said, I'm surrounded by idiots. If I went around hating people for something like that, I'd run out of my supply of hate real fast. Well, there certainly are people who can't hold, who can't hold together their fragile sense of self-worth, except by looking down on others. Even a few true idiots who take those emotions to the extremes become dictators or cult leaders and launch hunts against their inferiors. But I assume you'll be hated over something like that anyway. That way of thinking seems counterproductive. The base yourself by saying I'm just an idiot and you'll just puff up the many self styled geniuses of the world. That's the point of standing around with your mouth open waiting for talent to fall from the sky. You make your own. Hmm. No matter what you're doing, the most essential thing is to not give up. Fail as many times as it takes. Keep trying persistently until you can call yourself average. Average is just fine. If you can collect a nice group of average level skills, that's already above average. You've created your own sort of talent. Being a hard worker is a talent in its own right, were my sister's words. And from that group of average skill, you can work to improve further on the things that you think you're suited for. Person blessed with talent in a manner of speaking is just someone who found a path well suited to them early on. When you get down to it, people can accomplish nearly anything as long as they don't give up. Obvious, but it's true. On the other hand, guys who give up at the first setback will never get anything done. There's no need to rush. You're still a kid, you've got time. Show it anything and everything. Struggle around as much as you want. Rest my hand on Makina's head with a gentle thump. It's at just the right height for this sort of thing. That's what school is for, right? So, At the very least, I think the principal wants the school to be that sort of place. So I might as well throw out your chest and do as many stupid things that you want. With pride. Of course, if this girl ends up doing something truly dramatically stupid, the principal will be the one to face the music. So, uh, I'm probably overstepping my bounds just a bit here. Why not? Being dumb is fine. In the first place, the guys who get around calling themselves geniuses are either weaklings with fragile egos or jokes, jokers using the line to get a laugh. And even if there were some genius, that just makes it easy to mistake yourself for a perfect human and start slacking off. Hairs like that get passed by the tortoises, tortoises of the world eventually. Don't get me wrong, I just wanted to try playing the nice guy for a bit. You shouldn't trust me that easily, got it? <laughs> She's good at dancing around him. Huh, how to put this? I'm not sure how I feel about being put in the same boat as that girl. And then cast adrift. <laughs> Markin, I think you got a bite. No need to rush, slowly pull it out of the water. <laughs> See? People can do anything if they try, so don't give up before you start, okay? Okay, then you should go to Amine and Sa or Sachi and see if you can find an aquarium to raise it in. Make sure you only defeat its stuff without carotene. Oh, you remembered. Put my hand on Makina's head and ruffle her hair around roughly. Alright, better get that crawfish in water while it's still in good shape. Don't overfeed it, okay? That yeah. can be taken out of context. See you later. Mm. It shouldn't be, though. Thank you. Alright, it's time for my line. <clears throat> nice work you did. You're gonna go far, kid. Makina, still clutching the crawfish, waves her hand cheerfully and takes off at full speed towards the dorm. 
Thanks, son. Could they ignore my line? <laughs> it's more so that I don't know what the line is from right now, so I don't know how to react. I don't recall doing anything worthy of much gratitude, but regardless, you had such a happy thanks for this. It's kind of pleasant. Maybe because I was maybe it's because I was raised in an environment where such words were very rare. But I think being able to thank others so freely is also sort of talent. Mm -hmm. And it probably seems perfectly commonplace to her, so I'm sure she's not even conscious of that skill. So I get the feeling. She may just be overlooking the talents she does have. But I get it. Guess that's what makes her an idiot. <laughs> they say that idiots don't catch colds, but it's probably more accurate to say idiots don't realize it when they've caught a cold. In the same way, Makina's an idiot. Because Makina's an idiot, she's probably oblivious to her own abilities. Hmm. Also, what a weird girl. But then again, when people are rarely boring, or so I think, basking in the peaceful, sluggish atmosphere, mm -hmm. Makina left at her wake. It's 6 a.m., gentlemen. We've survived Five Nights at Freddy's. She's suffering. Good. Oh, hold off it. <laughs> Listen, it's not... It, you weren't in class if you aren't suffering by the end of it. I, I hope at least that you will enjoy my jokes. <laughs> as soon as the lecturer leaves the classroom, Michiru slumps forward onto her desk. Oh, we've only gotten through two periods. Are you out of stamina already? そんなの分かってるけど <laughs> Gotta refine it. Extremely depleted uranium. That's quite the imaginative leap of logic there. Hold <laughs> Again, you can grab her by her tears and swing her around. Sachi hands Michiru a new lead for a mechanical pencil. It's so Many a true word spoken in jest. Sorry, but uh, I'm gonna have to put her down for acting like a Frenchman. No, 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 no. At worst, no, no, no. At worst, she's Belgian, okay? Belgian. Kissing the cheeks is a specific French thing. I'm going to have to put no, her down. We can excuse this. We can excuse this. We can say there that is she's no Belgian excuse for French. being French. Luxembourgish. <laughs> I don't know Look, anything. Come here, you wax stain. Come here. <laughs> it, it is time. It is time. From Brittany, but she's not French, okay? It, it is time. Oh, yeah. It, it is time for a Eventually. very delayed yet a very needed abortion. <laughs> Coming from you, that's a bit rich. Buzzkill. Oh? 
I'm willing to bet you saw some spy movie yesterday. But anyway, uh, you've got, you've really got the work, Sachi. Right. It's you're in you're a unique one as am I for my own ability to speak let's see uh, do you have a chisel on hand as well as soon as I request that the chisel set emerges from the depths of a desk how about a heavy duty stapler that can handle dozens of sheets of paper at once? Eto. Standing from her desk, Sachi walks off to face a large locker in the back of the classroom. What's with that locker? It's twice the size of the others. Got the goddamn industrial state. Within, within a few seconds, she finds the requested item and brings it to me. Only I'd expect to have to go to the stationery store to get something like this. Hmm. You could call her a Swiss Army wife. Oh, very good. Good job, Igor. Yeah, that, that one is that, that one. That one is actually kind of kind of. That's a good one. That's a good one. Kind of good, yeah. yeah kind of. Oh, I can't believe I didn't think of that one. Also, I, oh, I don't know why, but all I, all I can imagine is Yuji just walking up to Sachi, give me a gun. And she just put, she just fucking hands him a fucking lock. <laughs> just locker of P90s in the back. Like, oh, opens a separate Side locker, arm. like there's yeah, fucking P90s, AKs, shotgun, several long Berettas. Long no, it, no, 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 no. She just she grabs just a magnum, the, just, just hands it to him. another room and it opens up like the Matrix one. Also, that's a deep Yeah. Deal, like, <laughs> take a pick. <laughs> God We're gonna damn. need guns, lots of guns. The the massive thing, yeah. Are you so saying her karate pick. chop cuts sharper than a folding blade? Uh. I see. Well, considering her parents' skill and devotion, I suppose she's well prepared to deal with most requests. Well, my arm hurts. You know, you know she got the John Wick tactical shop and all sleep. Some I'm a big fan of John Wick. I like it. Yeah. Good old full film. おお、マキナもたまにはいいこと言うじゃない。何あれ。そう。暑さのせいで湧いちゃったんでしょ。湧いちゃったって。え、そうでしょ。学園で鍋ってところが飛び抜けてるでしょ。うん。見直した、見直
マキナがお菓子入れたりするから最後はゲテモノ鍋になってた気がするけどでこら私が熱を入れて片手なんだからスルーしないでよイズレントリーフェイスアイドルはいできますけどこれはあなたが見つけたらいいです。これはあなたが見つけたらいいです。これはあなたが見つけたらいいです。これはあなたが見つけたらいいです。これはあなたが見つけたらいいです。これはあなたが見つけたらいいです。これはあなたが見つけたらいいです。これはあなたが見つけたらいいです。Yep, yep. <laughs> Set to offline. It's Should've too done this late. Long, long ago. Nope, we're still gonna show up. <laughs> Posterity <laughs> now knows. <laughs> hmm, an insane response even. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. Okay, this looks about right. Be careful to check out the bad bamboo flume that makes up the small canal. I've confirmed that the water is flowing smoothly. Having explained the gist of things to the others, I spent the last two periods obtaining the necessary materials and putting together a simple angled bamboo gutter on the roof. <laughs> A few minutes after lunch break begins, my classmates, excluding Sachi, emerge. What is this? He just looks over from the, uh, from the end of the Soulman shoot, just like in full Bob the Builder outfit, like, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, those were the. Builder. Sorry, this one. No, the, these were the only work clothes I had on hand. <laughs> Can we fix it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's buggered. Um, it, it's too late for any people at the school. <laughs> In my scout troop, we called him Bob the Knob. Oh yeah, there's a bamboo grove within walking distance in the direction of the mountains, so the materials weren't hard to come by. Masaka, Jugyo, Sabote, Yamade, Taketori, to ane. This would be the first time I've skipped class, come to think of it. Acting like we're living in the damn Meiji period. <laughs> Not the Meiji restoration times before that. Yeah, I suppose you could say that. Also, I used more so bamboo for this thing, but uh, when you're looking... To make more intricate goods like a hamper or strainer, the more flexible Madake bamboo is better suited to the job. If you can tell the difference between the two, it'll come uh, in handy when you're trying to live off the mountains, keep it in mind. Yeah. You say that now. <laughs> Sachi joins oh. us carrying a large tote bag on a on a shoulder. Sachi, nice timing, da ne. Nice timing. Find what we needed. Hi, hito tori no shokudai wa yoi dekimashita. Then let's start preparing for the meal. Koko ga matte iru yo da kara, watashi wa koko ni suru wa. Toka itte, honto wa tanoshimi ni shite ru kara ichiban joryu nan de sho? Ah, ha. ましょうかそ、それはやめておこうほら、カッターの葉食べたら喉切れちゃうかもしれないしええか、マキボー私らは上流の二人が逃したメを根こそぎゲットするんえ了解ですぜ、アネゴ
after the distributed pair of chopsticks and a bowl of soup for the noodles to everyone to take up their desired positions around the bamboo gutter. It seems like it seems like flowing salmon is a rare experience for everyone, not just me. So In response to Mikachu's yell, Sachi releases a few strands of salmon noodles into the water into the waterway. そんな顔しないで。まあ、ユニコも次頑張りなさいよ。次が絶対。ねえ、あまね。もしかしてここすっごく不利な位置なんじゃない。大丈夫よ。たくさん流し始めたら必ずこぼれが出てくるんだから。
If you've got nothing to do, how about going back to the dorm and studying? Is what I'd like to say, but come to think of it, I'm also wandering around wasting my free fifth period. Guess I don't exactly have the right to lecture Machina. Want some to drink? Dig my hand. I uh, dig my hand around in my pocket, searching for small change. Holding out her right palm towards me to declare it's fine, Machina takes out some that looks like a green stuffed animal from her pocket. The vaguely frog-shaped thing seems to be a purse as its red mouth opens wide with a snag of metal bearings. After taking out a few coins, Machina buys a juice box from the vending machines lined up in the, pa uh, in the passage, then returns to my side. <laughs> Playing the attached straw free from uh, stubby clumsy look with her stubby clumsy looking fingers, Machina pierces it into the juice box and starts to slurp up the contents. Similarly, I drink quietly from my paper cup full of oolong tea. <laughs> True. Now we're repeating ourselves. Probably evidence that we're both puzzled over how to get a conversation started. Was it that told me that man, that the man has to break the ice in situations like this? Of course, I'm not confident I could pull that off if I tried. What do I talk about with a girl like Makina? Stories. Hmm, stories. It's a fairly standard request, but I'm not sure where to go with this. What sort of stories? Cool story. That's a bit tricky. When you're looking for a chilling tale, I think ghost stories are the standard choice. Fortunately, I'm not lacking in that department. The legacy of the time I spent in my old school. Alright, then, uh, there's some I heard from an upperclassman at my previous school. Brace yourselves. This is the story of an American soldier who found himself on a southern island in a night flooded with lukewarm rain. The soldier was making his way south through the dark of the jungle amidst a pelting downpour, following a native trail with eight companions. The objective was an enemy anti-aircraft position. The rain had been falling for two days straight, leaving the ground swampy as a paddy field. Paddy field. With the moon hidden by thick storm clouds, the soldiers couldn't even see the back of the comrade walking two or three meters ahead. The squad's nerves were already worn by the suggestive darkness of the jungle, night jungle, but the relentless rain pierced through the tree canopy, and piercing through the deep tree canopy was slowly sapping their endurance as well. On top of it all, the rough map they'd received from the scouts was vague to the point of uselessness, good for little but further fueling their anxiety. As the squad trudged on in a virtual crawl through the knee-deep mud, it was inevitable that the formation grew increasingly loose. So the American soldier, a sniper operating at the rear of the column, was desperately struggling to avoid getting separated from the rest of his unit. Eventually he heard a distinctive clacking from, his, from some distance in front of him, raising, rising above the sound of the rain. He recognized the sound as a the castanets the platoon leader carried as a means to communicate at night, or for visibility conditions where hand signals were impractical. The number of times he clacked indicated an order to halt on the spot. The man dropped to one knee in the muddy water, grasped his rifle to his breast, and removed the lens cap from the scope, shielding it from the rain. An enemy ambush. Lying flat on the spot, the, main press, the man pressed, pressed a strong eye against the gun's sight, Back of the soldier in front of him came into view. No shots had been fired as of yet. Earlier reconnaissance had indicated there were barely any enemy troops or armed armed guerrillas in this area. If there were enemies here, the odds were that they would be scouts, and most likely a fairly small group. As the man rested his chin on the muddy water to watch the jungle ahead, he heard the first sound of gunfire. The enemy wasn't even thirty meters away from his squad. In fact, we bumped into each other. Six lines of fire from the enemy position, as we thought. It seems to be a small scouting group. Judging from the reckless way they opened fire blindly, they were probably poorly trained guerrillas who panicked after encountering their enemy after these unusual conditions. Ap uh, removing his gaze from the scope, the man grasped his weapon and pulled back on the bolt handle, pushing a 7.62 millimeter bottle, uh, bo bullet, not bottle, bullet. bullet into the exposed <laughs> chamber, he quickly returned his dominant eye to the eye cup of his sight. Hearing you absolutely botch this military stuff is killing me. Shut the fuck <laughs> up, man. Uh, I've been talking for a while, okay? 
The muzzle flashes I... visibly through the skull burned with white after imaging. The muzzle flashes visible through the scope burned white after images into his pupils. Into his pupil, fully dilated after his long walk in the darkness. He couldn't see the enemy. Aiming on intuition alone, he squeezed the trigger. A momentary explosion of light from his gun, and he heard an enemy grunt from the bush from 30 meters away. A hit. The man took his rifle in both hands and began to crawl on his elbows and his knees in search of a new firing position. After moving about 10 meters to his left, he discovered a convenient foxhole that would serve his purpose nicely. When he swung his body down into the hole, he found it was half full of stagnant water, just as he'd expected. But that fact barely registered in his mind. More importantly, from a position like this, he could snipe while hidden at it for a time. Sunk to the waist of the muddy water, he mechanically pulled down back his rifle bolt and squeezed the trigger. Again and again and again. All of a sudden, he heard a voice from the next foxhole. His run had been, it been occupied. Hey, give me a grenade. The response man took an M67 grenade from the belt slung around his waist and held onto it. Safety pip pin still fixed in place. Right hand reached out from the nearby trench and received it. Thank you. The man was certain he heard those words. But no matter how long the man waited, his comrade didn't throw the grenade. Maybe the safety pit was bent somehow and he couldn't get it loose. Hey, you okay? This man was speaking those words, he started to move his head to look above the edge of his encampment. At the moment, the great grenade exploded in the next foxhole. An explosion Ouch. at point blank range isn't something you hear. The overpowering wave of, whoops, waves of sound are unrecognized by your ears as a noise. A mass of burning air struck the man like a wall, knocking the helmet off his head and thrusting his body backwards into the muddy pool. His mouth, thrown open by the explosion, was instantly filled with filthy water. This man desperately tried to spit it out. He realized his tongue had been knocked back into his throat. He couldn't breathe. Quickly thrusting his hands into his mouth, the man peeled his tongue free with his fingers and forcefully vomited the water together with the breath that had gathered in his lungs. His throat was burning from inhaling the explosion's scorching wind and couldn't stop the tears that were pouring down his face. His head felt like it had taken a direct hit from a fastball made of concrete, and his ears were filled with a high-pitched ringing. Hey, you're right! Get it together! Curled up in the muddy water with his head in his hands, the man heard the voice of a comrade. At last, at least his eardrums weren't shattered, but himself being dragged up out of the foxhole by both arms. Got to move! Temporary withdrawal! Can you walk? It took all the man's effort to nod his head. He couldn't see. His eyes were... his ears were barely functional. His throat was on fire. He couldn't even speak. The man began to run his hands across the ground in a panic. His comrade knew what he was looking for. The man felt his rifle pressed back into his hands. Reassured by the familiar feel of his weapon, the man slung it onto his shoulders. His hands still clutching the ground fled the place for at a crawl. At thirty minutes past, the man came to, to himself. The rain had, ironically enough, finally stopped. His vision had largely recovered. When he walked around, he saw his companions, all just as filthy with mud. Hey, Shorty, you still alive? The sniper was still scurrying along the ground when that voice called to him. It belonged to a black man who joined the army at the same time as him. They'd been in the same squad in their training days as well, and the black man was his closest friend in the platoon. His greeting was casual as always. Give me a break. The man reshouldered his beloved rifle and told his friend about the hand grenade accident. That voice from the next foxhole, the grenade he handed over in response moments later to the explosion. That man angrily spat out the details of his brush with death through another stupidity. The black man listened in silence. When the story was over, after a brief pause, he finally spoke. Huh? What are you talking about, Shorty? The black man said his story was impossible. Come to think of it, of course it was. The man was the unit's bird man, the rear guard, the end of the line. Usually the birdman marches 10 to 20 meters behind the squad. There was no way an ally would have been encamped only 2 or 3 meters from his position. Even considering his movements to change his firing position, he couldn't have met anyone until the unit broke into retreat. I mean, let's say you're right and some jackass dropped a grenade in his own foxhole. Okay, who was that? The man looked around his surroundings, all eight of the squads, other members were accounted for. A few were lightly wounded, but clearly none of them had been on the receiving end of a grenade blast recently. So, 
Who the hell did you give that grenade to? In response to his friend's words, a shiver ran down the man's spine. After rejoining the main force and completing his report, the man told his story to a grizzled, grizzled veteran. The sergeant major had an explanation of sorts for him. That place was right around the site of an old battle where many Americans died. Among them were many wounded who had been cruelly slowly butchered by guerrillas with spears and bayonets. Some who had reached to the grenades on their waist and pulled out the pin rosin. Some who had reached to the grenades on their waist and pulled out the pin rosin and be tortured to death. So in the end, who had taken the man's grenade? Perhaps a lingering spirit still clinging to the battlefield even in death. So the story went. What do you think? Get a bit of a chill? Uh, good old uh, Harry <laughs> Boots stories. They don't get much better than that. Oh! Sorry about that! Forget about it. If you want a series of good military stories, uh, there's a number of good military books around in <laughs> Vietnam. A recent one. Vietnam oh has... Vietnam has some of the best of ghost stories. Yeah. Mm. That's... Not the, the punji pits. Yeah, I was reading the memoirs of an American helicopter pilot recently as well. Is that the one with the red night vision goggles? No. Hang on. Have we talked about that oh. one time I, was, I got on the bus to school and I was sitting down next to my friend that I usually sat with on the bus and I looked over at him and he was just reading Mein Kampf? So that's, real for that. That's a risk. Tradition. Say the least. Like just reading it right there on the populated bus. Tradition, baby. But yeah, he, man. He, he was the Vietnam. class's history nerd to the point where we jokingly called him the Führer. Vietnam has the, probably some of my favorite um, military ghost stories, military horror stories, whatever you want to call them. Very cool stuff. M my bad. <laughs> Huh? Yeah, I got it. Makina throws her empty juice box into a trash can and starts to patter away. As usual, she leaves as quickly as she arrives. But this time, after walking about three meters, Makina stops on the spot and turns back to me. Hmm? What? Life after death. Hmm. Can't say for sure since I've never experienced it first hand. If you believe in it, then maybe there is. In the army, there's a popular story about an afterlife exclusively for soldiers. It's a story you'll find in the armed forces of pretty much any country. It's pretty much identical form. If you believe an afterlife is waiting for you, it will be. I'm sure it's something like that. Sokka. <laughs> With those words, she runs off, this time without looking back. I don't think I said anything particularly interesting, but, uh, hearing those words of thanks naturally lightens my mood anyway. Flanking up the remaining oolong tea with a gold pie, throw the empty cup in the trash bin, and walk off towards our classroom for the fixed period class. There's a subspecies of woman distinguished by an excessive kind of helpful burning desire to take care of other people's problems. Within a few days of entering the school, I had a rough idea that Su Amin had fit this busybody woman classification. But I have to admit, I wasn't expecting her to extend her meddling to me quite so quickly. Although I suppose it is inevitable that we'd run into each other a lot since we live in the same dorm. It seems like she's come up to me at every free moment and playing the big sister. <laughs> I wish she'd put herself in my shoes. It's not easy having to politely shoot her down every time. God fucking damn it, I hate her. Take your tits off my head. Not wasting any time, are you? Not sure how she got the idea in her head, but lately every time we br a break begins, Amin has been clinging to me from behind. <gasps> Then forcefully pressing her oversized lumps of breast blubber against me. Blubber against me as if to say, check it out, I'm the big tits character. The way they droop is just a little. The droop just a little is very popular with the enthusiasts. 
Look, you're heavy. Remove your chest flap from my head. On the contrary, I'm something of a fan. I prefer that. If a man sexually harassed me, at least I can knock him flat without feeling guilty about it. What do you want from me? If you have something to say, then spit it out already. Thanks, sis, but I'm a big boy now, so could you please get lost? Ah, <laughs> Stop that, I'm a dainty little thing. I'll break more easily than you think. <laughs> they say a snapping turtle won't release prey from its bite even if it's l if lightning strikes nearby. Amine is a similar beast. When she clings to me, my only release is the sound of the bell. If this woman kept a pet cat, I'm positive it would go bald from stress within a week. I'm not confident my own hair will be safe if I allow these assaults to continue. I think it's about time I get my message across, even if it requires some uh, taking a somewhat harsh attitude. Amine, that's about enough. Just as I begin to shout, Sakaki appears with spectacular timing. So make a grimace at Amine's response. The glare is, is expressive. I, who are you supposed to be? Ah, <laughs> Don't mind me. Again. She finally released me. What a noisy woman. What do you mean? Don't make it sound like you're familiar with her past. Have you known that long? So, to it, I'm not sure that I'm so Amine wasn't always like this. I just don't understand the woman. Why does she drape herself all over me like that? I did. Just the other day, having stocked up on necessities from my new dorm life at the local supermarket, I was wandering leisurely around the area in front of the station. Don't call me that. Spare me. I can't get any cuter than I already am. Or the other girls will get jealous and start picking on me. I would let girls pick on me. Of course you would, you bottom. <laughs> the only oh, thing I'd let them pick is my nose. Oh, God. Oh. Thank you. I'm gonna point it at the plastic supermarket bag dangling from my hand. Mayonnaise! Hold on. Hold on, let me actually search for the proper video. <laughs> Instead of just the GIF. Mayonnaise! Wow! 
<laughs> FYI, we lost uh, Bud again. Yeah, because his brother is being a stupid stinky head again. <laughs> Gives me time to roll out the fucking browser in OBS to show people what I'm talking about. Standard. <laughs> I love that scene so much. I don't know what anime it's from. No fucking clue. However, I fucking love it. <laughs> <laughs> Mayonnaise. Wow! It's fucking great. Love it. <laughs> Peak internet content, you could say. <laughs> Peak internet. Yeah, it's very. Peaking internet would be a bit more accurate. Much like how uh, in Soviet Russia, TV may end up watching you. Touch the cow, <laughs> do it now. <laughs> Strange. Anyway, so um... Could we pause for a few seconds, just for a quick bio break, until we get Bud back, perhaps? Or until... whichever. Hold on. You've had another idea, haven't you? I was just looking if it's fucking available as a gift for in gift form on Tenor, but apparently not anyways. Uh, BRB! And we're back! By we, I just mean Eagle and me. Yup. Bud apparently is indisposed now. Indisposed. Okay, I'm sorry. That's how he said. I don't know how to speak anyways. Look, you just... It even took me a lot. Don't just start rifling through my bag. His knowledge was always, do you wander around comparing prices all day long? Got impressive devotion to economizing. I felt definite admiration since my master was a sort of wild woman who bought things without even looking at the price tag. I'm not that caught up on price. I appreciate the thought, but I just want to score a store that's convenient. It's all well and good to wander around looking for bargains, but when you consider the increased effort and consumption of time involved, getting too picky frequently turns into a loss. That's right, I'll be going. Yeah, I did finish my shopping. As soon as the words left her mouth, Amine was standing by my side, firmly grasping my hand. What do you think you're doing? This, of course, uh, a, demos a demonstration. I raised my hand that Amine had grif gripped, or rather captured, her fingers entwined tightly with mine. But I'm a kid who, wants who won't go home unless Mama pulls him there. I've got to admit, I don't remember acting quite that adorable. I've got to admit, I don't remember acting quite that adorably. So I'm very interested in where you're c coming from the here. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. Her gripping the right hand tightly, I'm gonna raise the forefinger of her other hand against her lip and racked her brains for an answer. Is that it? If it's role playing, then I guess I have to play along. <laughs> <laughs> Did you really think I'd say that? Off! Forcefully yanked my arm free, shaking off Amina's grip. <laughs> If you think that puppy dog guy, if you think that puppy dog face will make me act nicer out of guilt, you're very wrong. Don't flirt in public. That's a rule of mine. <laughs> Stop twisting my words. The point is, I can't think of a single reason why I should hold hands with you. It's not an answer to the question why you want to hold hands. Hmm. Some kind of obsessive compulsive disorder. What sort of accent was it? Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. We'll find out eventually. The hell? 
As she spoke, Amina took her hand for the sec took my hand for the second time. Joking. When did the joke start? Ah, it was irritating. Take the left at least, camp don't calm down when someone's got a hold of my dominant hand. Why get friendly with me? So about the way, fun a uh, funny little thing that wasn't actually really that funny. Uh, I was bringing my grandmother some firewood today and uh, as I was leaving I noticed like there's like a weird clacking when I uh, whenever I step on my right foot. Uh, on my left foot. So I checked and there was like something gray that I couldn't quite make out what the fuck it was and I tried to pull it off but it was like too hard or like something like that that it wouldn't let itself be scratched off. So I just went down, uh, just went back home and took off my shoe and checked it. And there was a fucking nail in there. Like it wasn't actually a screw, not a nail, but uh, who fucking cares the difference. So after we pried it out, it was actually like a solid like two centimeters long so it was wow. a good thing that it was like in like perpendicular slightly because if it yeah. was like in completely straight that would have been in my foot yeah that would have been hellish mm. I have no idea when the fuck it got in there but alas it somehow fucking did anyways uh hard to say I didn't have any I wouldn't say I don't. I just wanna, I just wanna understand your motive. You're a weird one. I'm going back. Having moved to my left as a request that Amina didn't mess around any further. On her way back, she calmly acted her age. Wanting ants really did seem to be enough to satisfy her. Doubts did run through my head, considering it's only been a few days since we met. She's bizarrely friendly. But still, as she is a member of our class full of special cases, despite her relatively normal facade, Amina must have her own unhappy circumstances. This hand holding may well have been have some meaning for her. で。彼女の過去を鑑みるに、スキンシップを無限に断るのも気が引けるので、うやむやのうちに黙認していたら、最近富に目に余るほど過剰な接触をするようになってきた。と、ウィルメイク、ウィルメイクアテクティブアウト
plausible theory, but I'm having a hard time buying it in her case in the first place. Are her eyes that terrible? I'm wasting my breath talking to you. You say that now, but you will be riding his carrot soon enough. <laughs> I love how we have these in jokes that a few of the audience already know, but you know what? Let's just have them. Hmm. Have they done here? It would be if I hadn't just spotted Kumini Sachi out of the corner of my eye. Hey, Sachi, have a minute. Hi, what is it? Do you know anything in particular about Anima's ominous past? Hmm, don't know in other words, nobody knows the whole story. True enough. As long as the person in question doesn't want to discuss it, I suppose I shouldn't pry any further. And in the first place, I'm a little dubious that Amane's past really has anything to do with holding my hand. That's second things in a new direction. Specifically, what do you think I did? <laughs> That's so funny. Well, whatever. Now that rings a bell, I have no memories of being lovers in a previous life either. そんな記憶があったら気持ち悪いわよ。この学園に男の人が転入してくるのは珍しいですし、何かこうクラスメイトの男子とそういうデート地味たことがしてみたかっただけなのではないでしょうか。I hmm. think so. Incidentally, Sachi, does that mean you're quite interested in holding hands and going on a date with me as well? えっと手をつなぐこと自体は嫌ではないですしあの俺と手をつなげデートをしろとそう強く命令していただければ絶対に断らないと思いますけどうん、I see. Thank you for the value of opinion. I'll file it under not helping it helpful in the slightest. Uh, how about you, Sakaki? 私が? あなたと? Right, got an interest. I got the picture. Thanks so much for your compassion. So in the end, asking around didn't get me anything resembling a clear answer. From what Sakaki says, it doesn't seem like Amine wants to hold hands indiscriminately. The mystery only the mystery is only deepened. <laughs> Thanks. Yep, the overhead claims another victim. Bless you. Thank you. Just at that moment, uh, I'm gonna enter the classroom, pulling Makina by the hand, oblivious to our gossiping. Point my thumb towards the pair and their connected hands. You said Anmina doesn't have a habit of ha holding hands, right? Sakaki watches Amine and Makina as she speaks. Suddenly she clasps her hands together as if struck by a burst of insight. Say what? Wait, what? I've been put in the same category? With a kid like this who half ex who you half expect to get lost tottering after a butterfly? What a seriously unpleasant thought. I appreciate that you're probably trying to help, but uh, that's basically an indirect saying of uh, way of saying you look like a hopeless man. Hmm? Skaki, could you please stop rubbing salt in the wound without even realizing it? Kind of stings. Mind answering one last question for me? Is there a single normal person in this school? Sure. 
true enough. I don't think you've got some. I don't think you've got some special variety of unhappiness. Sensing the uh, admonition of Nisakaki's words, I feel the stirring of something like shame. Whether it's normal or not, this student life isn't bad in its own way. I've started to like this place enough to reach that conclusion. Ah, this seems Don't like a good place to end up. I've got... Art brings bread. Wait, it's bread. Yeah. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this one. See you next time. Bye-bye. See you next time.